When we consider this topic of whether there is a role for traditional digital rectal examination in the modern era of fancy imaging, I split our scenarios into three different cases. The first being early detection in the primary care environment, the classic sort of screening environment, I suppose we'd say. The second is more like what I do as a urologist, early detection of a patient who's already been sent to me because of some suspicion. What's the role of DRE there? And finally, what is the role of DRE for staging? So if I go back to the, the overall premise of the role of DRE, at this particular meeting, the APCCC in Legano, we're usually asked to consider environments in which everything is available. We have all the tests. There's no concerns about funding, which is a bit of an idyllic world that none of us really live in. So when I considered those three scenarios, I split it into, well, the APCCC idyllic world and then also the real world. So what do we think, first of all, about the role of DRE for traditional primary care or general practice uh, in the assessment of men uh, regarding prostate cancer? Well, there have been a couple of papers only in the past year that have continued to hammer a nail into the coffin of DRE in the primary care setting, in my view. What we really know from a large systematic review from Chirac Chariot's group and from the Probe study, a randomized study in Germany, both papers published just the past 12 months in European Urology Oncology, is that digital rectal examination adds very, very little. In fact, almost nothing compared to just PSA testing on its own. Not only that, uh, there's been a survey in prostate, from Prostate Cancer UK of 2,000 men, just general men in the population, asking them, what do men think about the role of digital examination? And two thirds of men out there in the community are sufficiently put off by the idea of an old fashioned examination that they would not even go to their GP. So I think if you take those two things, number one, data is showing us that DRE doesn't add in the early detection setting. And number two, it actually puts men off. So men are not coming in the door because of it. Uh, my conclusion was that the role of DRE in primary care uh, should be abolished. And indeed, we're beginning to see that in guidelines. Now, people will jump up and down, people like me sometimes, and say, well, what about that guy with the normal PSA whose cancer we only detect on DRE? And yes, there are those very rare cases out there, but they usually have some symptoms. And what we're really talking about in the primary care screening type setting is asympt asymptomatic men in their 50s, 60s, and up into the early 70s. So I think if you consider we're putting off men with the idea of a digital examination, it's not worth it to catch the occasional patient who actually usually has symptoms. So I understand, you know, even on Twitter, we saw a bit of blowback from that, but that's the data. And we're beginning to see that in guidelines around the world, that DRE is no longer recommended in that upfront setting. The second area, though, what about people like me, a urologist who spends a huge amount of my time assessing men for their risk of prostate cancer? That's really where this topic comes alive because of the advent of MRI scanning. And what we clearly know is that MRI is like a virtual DRE. We get beautiful images inside the prostate, not just the bit of the prostate at the back that we feel with the finger, but the whole prostate. We also know that if we do an MRI for men whose PSA is a little bit raised and it's normal, it means that the vast majority of men will avoid a biopsy in the first place, which is a good thing. These men are avoiding the discomfort and they're also avoiding a diagnosis of low grade prostate cancer in about 25% of cases. And we don't need to diagnose those cancers, at least at that point in time. So I think absolutely for sure, because of MRI, the role of DRE is greatly diminished in the early detection pathway for a urologist, for someone whose GP has already sent them along because of some suspicion, but it hasn't completely disappeared. It still adds value. And that's in the idyllic world where everybody has access to high quality MRI. But in the real world, it's really important that we recognize even in 2024, that that idyllic world only exists in a few regions around the world. Even in high income countries like the USA, for example, there is huge health disparity. So depending on where you're diagnosed, whether you have health insurance or not, you know, probably the vast majority of men in the US will still undergo a biopsy without having an MRI. So we know therefore, if there's no MRI in your early detection pathway, 
the finger still reigns, I'm afraid, in the early detection in a urology practice where we're trying to make that recommendation about should a patient have a biopsy or not. So it very much depends which world you're in. Idyllic APCCC, for sure, everyone should have an MRI and we act on that. DRE has a very limited role for me, especially here in Australia, where we have widespread high quality MRI completely funded for many years now. The final area then was local staging. What about the patient who's been diagnosed with prostate cancer? And we want to know, has that cancer spread in the region around the prostate? Can we feel a nodule? Can we feel that nodule has pushed into surrounding structures like the seminal vesicles, making it a T3 cancer rather than a T2 or a T1 cancer? The finger still has a role there because all of the risk stratification systems we use are still based on old fashioned digital examination. But at the APCCC, we had a really robust discussion about whether that entire system, the TNM system for prostate cancer needs to be revisited in the era of MRI. And I suspect that's the direction of travel. We need to understand that what we feel on a finger is not the same as, for example, extra capsular extension only seen on an MRI scan. But our conclusion for local staging is that we still prefer having staging tools like MRI, but nonetheless, digital rectal exam examination still has a very important role to play. The very final area that I finished off on in considering the role of DRE with modern imaging was moving a little bit away from MRI and towards PSMA PET-CT, one of our favorite topics. And we clearly know that PSMA PET-CT is superior to conventional imaging for the, the staging of prostate cancer outside the prostate. So has a cancer spread to nearby lymph nodes or to distant areas? We published a randomized trial called Pro-PSMA in The Lancet that demonstrated the superiority of PSMA PET-CT. But the question we had in Lugano at the APCCC was, what about PSMA within the prostate, just looking within the prostate? There is some interest there. We've published a trial called the primary trial, which compared uh, the addition of PSMA to MRI and transperineal biopsy, showing that, yes, it did increase the negative predictive value. And we currently have an ongoing randomized trial evaluating the role of PSMA in the early detection pathway. But this is not ready for prime time, but certainly an area to watch. So in summary, yes, digital rectal examination still has a role for the urologist like me, who's involved in early detection, uh, but it's only as a complement to novel imaging like MRI. In the primary care setting, for men just having a conversation about their general risks, the role of DRI, DRE is greatly diminished, and in my view, should probably come out of all guidelines in that setting.